Good evening, friends. This is Francis Langford bringing you a part of the American scene, Maxwell House Coffee Time. May we come in? It's Maxwell House Coffee Time, brought to you each week by Maxwell House, the coffee that's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee in the world at any price. So have another cup of coffee and listen to 30 minutes of words and music and reminiscence. The voice of Eloise, the Maxwell House Orchestra and Choir, under the baton of Carmen Dragon, this is Toby Reed, and here is your hostess, Frances Langford. <laughs> sun when you're crying a tear can hide the brightest sky of blue you can't hear a song when you're sighing no matter how the birds sing for you suppose you made believe your eyes were cloudy window panes I'm sure you'd clean them up to look for rainbows when it rains I'm sure you'd clean them up to look for rainbows when it rains. You can't see the sun when you're crying. So smile and let the sun shine through. Thank you very much. That's a mighty interesting song you were singing, Francis. Of course, whether you could see the sun or not would depend on whether you were crying, small, ladylike tears, or just plain bawling. Toby, you're not supposed to interpret the song literally. It's meant to be symbolic, figurative, and imaginative. Oh, well, I know a symbolic, figurative, imaginative song. Well, good for you. Let's hear it. Oh, that's a honey. Not many of us can pack up and actually chase over the horizon in search of rainbows. But every day we can hunt them in our dreams. That feeling that someday we'll find a rainbow has always been almost a national spirit of optimism and hope on the American scene. Wait a minute, Francis. The fellow in the song professes not to believe in very much of anything. I know that's what he says, but he still admits he keeps on chasing rainbows. Remember? I'm always chasing rainbows Watching clouds drifting by My schemes are just like all my dreams Ending in the sky Some fellas look and find the sunshine I always look and find the rain Some fellows make a winning sometime I never even make a game Believe me, I'm always chasing rainbows Waiting to find a little bluebird in bed. I'm always chasing rainbows Did you ever hear a saxophone player fool around with a tune like that? Yes, the saxophone's a pretty nice instrument, isn't it? With a special quality of instrumental tone we can all recognize and admire. But to bring out the full beauty of this or any other melody, it takes not only the brass instruments, but the strings, the woodwinds, and the rhythm section, too. All skillfully combined in a completely satisfying blend of colorful orchestral sound. As 
as with the making of great music, so it is with the making of Maxwell House coffee. Not just one, but many superb coffees go into the famous Maxwell House blend, each carefully selected by experts for its own very special flavor qualities. Our Maxwell House experts choose Manizales for Melanus. They add Medellins for richness. They select other famous coffees for robust vigor. And they blend in Bucaramangas for fine, full body. And the result is perfection in a cup of coffee. A blend so wonderfully delicious, it's actually bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee in the world. So, friends, why not enjoy great coffee at its best? You can for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. Just say, Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. I'm always chasing you know about 1912? Well, it came along 35 years ago. Oh, you'll have to do better than that. Why, sure. Uh, well, now let's, let me see. There were suffragists, weren't there? There certainly were. They paraded in New York. And the people, there were people, weren't there? (laughs) Sure, all over the place. Some of them were playing baseball. You should know who won the world's championship. I know I should, Francis, and I hate myself more and more every minute. (laughs) Boston beat New York three to two. You've been doing a little research. Of course I have. Those were the days of Caruso and Tetrazzini and Mary Garden. George M. Cohan was playing on Broadway and Weber and Fields and Marie Dressler and Douglas Fairbanks. And somewhere along the year, a brand new song hit the music stands with an impact that carried it smack into immortality. A song that went like this. Way down on the levee in old Alabama, there's Daddy and Mammy. Ephraim and Sammy on the moonlight Mac can find them all while they are waiting The bamboos are syncopating What's that they're saying? Oh, what's that they're saying? And while they keep playing My mama can sway in this lagoon songs are always a part of the American scene. This one doesn't say I love you in so many words, but the melody is sweeping across the heartstrings of the country. And here's Francis Langford to sing it. Lovely love 
laughter Or you will cry for me Forever after Beware my heart Of violins in the night When he is near They're loaded with dust a dream that wasn't meant to start. Beware, take care, my heart. Beware, beware of violence in the night. When he different things. It's the spice, tangy smell of jams and jellies simmering, and it's the long, shining rows of jars gleaming on the shelves. It's your kid brother's lemonade stand, and your dog sleeping in the coolness of the arbor. This Sunday, it might be a family picnic. That is, if you can get your father out of bed. You hear her, but you keep snoring. You figure if you keep it up long enough, maybe she'll go away and let you sleep. Pop, wake up! Pop! You wonder what kind of a monster this is that you've sired and raised. (laughs) You think maybe you didn't spank her enough when she was little and your palm begins to itch at the thought. Pop, get up! Breakfast's getting cold, Pop! Listen to her. Pop, pop, pop. She sounds like a firecracker. Might as well stop that snoring. I know you're awake. I'm not awake. (laughs) If you're not awake, how come you're talking? I'm talking in my sleep. Francis, isn't he up yet? I can't get him up, Mother. Well, I can. You go and get me a big pitcher of ice water. I'm up! (laughs) Now hurry, Frank, please. Breakfast on the table, and we have lots to do today. Right after breakfast, I want you to look at the washing machine. I've seen the washing machine. Well, I want you to see if you can find out what's wrong with it. And you'll have to hurry, because I want to get started on the picnic before the day's half gone. (laughs) What did you say? I said the picnic. Are people still going on those things? We are. It isn't fair. It isn't fair that a man should work hard all week and have this happen to his Sunday. This is supposed to be a day of rest. Somehow you get up, you make your way through the black clouds of your thoughts to the breakfast table. The shower of feminine chatter immediately assaults your consciousness, like the jangling empty sounds of parrots, parakeets, monkeys. Well, I think we ought to go to Alum Rock. Where do you think we ought to go, Father? I wouldn't trust myself to venture an opinion at this time. (laughs) Your father picks up the paper and disappears behind it. You think to yourself, why must men do things like that? Why, every morning, must a man make a barricade of the morning news and disappear behind it? You think to yourself, this is my only seclusion. With some intelligent print between them and me, I can almost forget that there are women on the other side of this paper. (laughs) I'll go, Mother. That must be Toby. You think to yourself, lucky Toby. No one's making him go on a picnic. At least he could have said no if he hadn't been fool enough to say yes. 
Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Toby. Hi. <laughs> so they roped you too, did they? Oh, no, I'm looking forward to it. It's a wonderful day to get out there. You air. come with me, my boy. I want to tell you where thoughts like that can lead you. <laughs> After breakfast, you insist to do the dishes while your mother puts the lunch together. And then it's time to go. You get out into traffic. The highway's jammed with cars. All driven by poor, defenseless husbands being directed from the back seat. <laughs> Turn off that road up there on the right, Pop. Yes, Francis. You find a perfectly lovely pasture. You have to share it with the cow, but you don't mind. There's a stream leading into a pond, and you spread out a tablecloth beside it and begin to take the lunch out of the basket. Oh, isn't this perfectly lovely? It's going to rain. Oh. <laughs> there isn't a cloud in the sky. There will be. Father, Pop, get it away. Get it away. What's the matter, Holly? A bee, a bee's chasing me. I hope he catches you. Get him, Pop, get him. Stay away from me with your dang bee. Stay away. <laughs> Now, Frank, there's no use carrying on like that over a little bee sting. Just leave it alone. It'll be all right. Your father is in a very bad humor. He sits talking to himself, patting his precious little bee sting. <laughs> Your mother goes right on putting out the lunch. Suddenly you hear a scream. Daddy! Toby Francis! Somebody help! Good help! gracious! What now? You look up and there's your sister standing on a rock in the middle of the creek. There's a deep pond. I'm going to fall in. Fred! I'm coming, sister. I'm coming. I'm not. <laughs> I'm afraid to move. Come back across the rocks the way you got out there. I can't. I'm dizzy. Now, now, sister, just hold out your hand. Just, just hold it out. Toby, watch out. That rock's slipping. Sister, if I can just reach your hand now, just a little further. Let it... Yow! Oh! Toby going swimming before lunch. Pop, help him. That's a deep pool. I can't get a foothold. It's over my head. It's Hold on to the rocks, Toby. Pop will be right out. Pop, pop, pop. It's always pop, pop. <laughs> be careful, Frank. Watch that third rock. Watch it yourself. That third rock slips, Pop. Watch the third rock. This rock is all right. Now, Toby, I'll just bend down and I... E oh, I... Yeah! <laughs> Hello, Toby. Hello, Mr. Hogg. Why don't we just stay in here the rest of the day? Somehow you manage to get your father and Toby back on land. Sister forgets all about being dizzy and comes back across the stiffy stepping stones. You all sit down to eat. Uh, choo! Oh, Toby, I do hope you're not catching cold. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> now, Frank, you stop that. You never catch cold. <laughs> what have I ever done that I should be denied even sympathy? Uh-oh. Thunder. I knew it. Don't worry. Don't worry. It'll blow over. Oh, how do you do? I knew you'd be here, and I'm so glad to meet you. Who are you talking to, Pop? The ant in my sandwich. <laughs> Granny, look at these beautiful leaves I found in the woods. Sister, put those down right away. That's poison oak. Oh, Francis. That had to happen. The day wouldn't have been complete unless that happened. Never mind, baby. We all make the same mistake at some time of our lives. <laughs> Well, there it is. I said it would rain. You grab the lunch basket and the tablecloth and run for the car. And you start home. Well, we're all wet now. It was going to be such a lovely day. Oh, I declare, I don't know why we can't go out and have a picnic like other people. Now, now Mother, don't well, cry. You fixed a mighty nice lunch. You certainly did. You didn't enjoy it a bit. I certainly did, and so did Toby. I sure did. And so did Sister. I didn't have any. Well, never mind. You're going to have poison oak instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always say there's nothing like a picnic. On a Sunday afternoon. Oh, Frank, you still remember that old song. That song will never be old to me, Mother. Oh. <laughs> On a Sunday afternoon. You ride home singing. Your father has his arm around your mother, and her head is on his shoulder. 
and Toby reaches out for your hand. Francis, hmm? I had a wonderful time. So did I, Toby. I'm glad you came, but I'm sorry you fell in the pond. Oh, I'm not. I wouldn't change a minute of it. And suddenly you realize you wouldn't change a minute of it either. Years from now, you'll still be talking about Toby and Pop falling in the creek and Sister picking the poison oak. Those are the kind of memories that make up the scrapbooks of all American families. The jokes on themselves that they like to go back to and chuckle over and remember. The things that happened to them on the American scene on those summer picnics. They worked hard on Monday, but Monday, that Monday is Sunday A good old-fashioned family picnic. I guess there'll never be anything quite like it, Francis. Well, you could say the same thing about Maxwell House, Toby. So I could, Francis. After all, like that family outing, Maxwell House coffee is a mighty well-loved part of the American scene, too. We Americans enjoy coffee so much, it's our national drink. And here's a fact worth remembering. Today, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. Now, to explain this nationwide preference... Flavor's the answer, of course. That good-to-the-last-drop Maxwell House flavor that comes from the masterful blending of choice Latin American coffees, radiant roasted to perfection itself. Yet with all this extra flavor and goodness, Maxwell House costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffees you could buy. You get so much more for so little more. No wonder, then, that with over a thousand coffee brands to choose from, his favorite coffee brand is Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Vincent Newman's lived only a brief span of years, 47 to be exact, but he left a brilliant accounting of those years in his music. Listen while Carmen Dragon, Eloise, the choir, and I bring you some of the music that made him a part of the American scene. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
nothing but love in view. Then if you fall once and for all, I'll see my dream. Now, before we close, let's give a well-deserved salute to the National Association of Retail Grocers meeting Sunday in San Francisco for their 48th annual convention. Working long hours, serving us all with a smile, the grocer deserves and gets the thanks of a nation. Until next Thursday night, for Francis Langford, Carmen Dragon of the Orchestra, and Eloise, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Appetites wake with iced coffee, and iced coffee so easy to make with instant Maxwell House coffee. Dissolve in a little warm water, add cold water and ice cubes, and presto, you've got iced instant Maxwell House with all the rich, satisfying flavor you'd expect from the famous Maxwell House blend. And that wonderful flavor is all there, full strength. No fast-melting ice to dilute it because you use cold water. Enjoy iced coffee instantly with instant Maxwell House. Good to the last drop. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.